So speaking of breaking social contracts, I loved your thread when there was someone who was just like vile and hate like hatings. It was like they had like four different pictures of adult actresses or OnlyFans girls that then they they committed the sin of falling in love and getting married and having a family. And this pisses people off more than almost anything on the internet, internet to where they can justify like really vile comments to either like the women or even their children slash babies, which is bananas. What about this? It's like you, you don't want us to be a whore. And then once we're a whore, you can't be anything but a whore again. If you, you know, you say you're doing something else, well, you know, you have to go do this one thing because you you committed to it. It's You're not allowed to evolve as a, a person and you're not allowed to have a change of mind or lifestyle or values or whatever. Like that's what we should, we should want from everyone is constant growth, constant evaluation. Who I am now, I hope is not who I was 10 years ago. That would be a travesty. Like I want to grow, constantly be growing and like self-evaluating. So you get punished for doing the thing that they wanted you to do from the beginning. Like, what is that about? Yeah. It's probably because that punishment is intended to be a threat to prevent that behavior in the first place. So there's an element of punishment there and kind of a revenge fantasy there, you know? So a lot of these, these uh, social restrictions on promiscuity are intended to prevent that behavior and to kind of regulate the sexual marketplace. So when people see that those aren't working, I think they get upset. And I think for a lot of men on a very personal level, it's a revenge fantasy. So it's kind of like, okay, very promiscuous women. The idea is like, okay, you can be promiscuous, but no one's going to love you. No one's going to want to be with you. And then they see these women who are very promiscuous. They're in porn or whatever. They're conventionally attractive. They get to their mid thirties and then they marry and they settle down. And it just kind of uh, goes entirely contrary to that revenge fantasy. So, so they hate it. And it's like, I think this is related again to kind of what we said about attractiveness. It's like, at the end of the day, these are very famous people. They're conventionally attractive. They're not going to have trouble finding someone, you know, and probably someone that they like who then, you know, a guy who probably is also similar in attractiveness to them, uh, regardless of what they have done. You know, these guys that are upset about it, they don't have to date that porn actress. She wouldn't date them anyway. So it's mm -hmm. kind of like, it's neither here nor there, but yeah, the idea that they're going to, you know, have a lot of trouble finding a mate or something because of this history, it doesn't seem to be the case, especially for, you know, these very famous kind of porn actresses. They're going to find someone. Yeah. Yeah. And it goes against the narrative, like this massive emphasis on body count. And I mean, even before internet was huge or social media was huge, that was always kind of a conversation, but there was always a very different kind of person that asks how many people you've been with. It comes often in my experience from like an immense amount of insecurity because you're trying to like measure yourself up to whoever else that other person was with. Whether I was asking a guy, that was always at my lowest point. That was when I was, you know, 18, 19, 20. And I cared a lot because I was like, I, how am I going to compare to her? What does she look like? How, like, was she more fun? Like, do you like her more? It was all like this very neurotic, um, like insecurity. And I think it's the same with men too. It's just more of like this, like territorial thing, like that is mine. And then you have people, believe it or not, that have a different perspective, a more, a more I would say like evolved perspective about like, what is relationship and what, it, what is this person? Is like this a good fit for me? Is she um, going to be a good mother, a good wife? Like, is she the same person that was making those decisions however long ago? And I think some people are approaching it with nuance. And the Riley example was really great because people really go after her. Candace Owens has gone after her a couple of times. And she's obviously beautiful. She's obviously extremely successful financially. Her husband is also extremely good looking and um, financially successful. I think he's like a professional stunt man. Yeah. And yeah. like she has a beautiful baby. Like there is nothing to get mad at unless you're just jealous that you don't have those things. And they, you know, say things about him like he's a simp. You go on his profile for two seconds. Like that is a man's man. He's doing like eighty backflips off of a building. Like you, there's nothing to to kind of criticize there. So to me, it says like yes, for some people, body count is absolutely going to matter, and they are going to have deal breakers. But for other people, they look at it from a different perspective. It's like, well, what are the conditions of the relationship now? Is she going to be faithful now? Um, is she right? What are the expectations of the relationship? Are we going to be monogamous, monogamish, poly, whatever? Like these are conversations people are having, and they're not emotionally attached to the past. Like there's no retroactive jealousy. They're just kind of looking at, at the relationship from a futuristic standpoint, which to me seems a lot healthier. Yeah. Yeah. I've done, done a little bit on body counts as well. Yeah. Just like you called it at the end, I was going to say that's called retroactive jealousy. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> people, 
compare themselves to past partners. And, and what I found when I did the body count research, I was looking at, you know, what kind of men prefer virgins? And it was men who were younger, a little bit lower in mate value themselves, men who had fewer sexual partners themselves. So these are probably going to be men who are a little bit more insecure about it. I asked, you know, men and women both, like, do you even ask? About half of men and women, they don't even ask. So it doesn't seem to be the case, you know, that a lot of people care. Some people care. Some people care more. There is, you know, a body count preference for people who do ask, uh, which is, you know, typically a little bit lower. But at the same time, there's, you know, the body count deal breaker tends to be really, really high as well. So looking at something like that, it doesn't seem to be something that most people uh, are really, really rejecting partners for. Uh, and the men who seem to care the most about it are probably the men, yeah, who are going to be a little bit more insecure about that, right? Because, you know, security as a man kind of comes with increasing, you know, value, whatever that may be to some extent, which also kind of comes with age. Uh, you know, men who accumulate more sexual partners, they care less and less about body count as well. So it's kind of like, yeah, men, you know, get to that point. And it's, it's like, well, I've had sex with a lot of people. Am I going to worry about it that much? Those men, probably not. Oh, that's interesting. I would expect the opposite because that's, again, maybe it's just my feed and the algorithm is just giving me like a whole bunch of just like bad takes. But it's these men that are saying that they can kind of devour whatever that whatever they want. But the woman is supposed to be virginal, like constantly virginal. She's never allowed to be the Madonna unless it's with him. And that's it. And to me, I'm like, that's not fair at all. Like what? I don't understand that justification. If it's even, then sure, that makes sense. But if you have one person that thinks like sexual promiscuity is okay on one end and not the other to me that's like mental gymnastics yeah and in my research and in past research that i didn't do men and women view promiscuity in a mate kind of similarly men and women both view it negatively so there is kind of that discourse out there that you know men say oh you know i'm, I'm a key that can open any lock is a master key a lock that can get opened by any key is a shitty lock that kind of a thing men seem to think that women are going to view high promiscuity in men positively, but women don't. Women tend to view it about as negatively in men as men view it in women, but men view high promiscuity in other men really positively. It's like this really, really robust status cue that men signal to other men. It's like, I can get a lot of women. I've had sex with a lot of women. And we know that men lie about this a lot, that men exaggerate their count a lot. And I think that's something as well that we see in a lot of this online discourse where men are like, I can just run through a bunch of women, but she has to be a virgin. The men saying that probably are not men that are, you know, having a lot of sexual partners. <laughs> we know that those are the men that care less, right? Those are probably men that have, you know, kind of that double standard, but that are probably not acting out that double standard. You know, they're probably low body count, low, low success with women themselves because we know, you know, higher body count, higher success with women is associated toward more open attitudes toward promiscuity. Men who benefit, you know, from promiscuous environments tend to be more supportive of it. They tend to care less about those sorts of things.